Whether or not you've been following along in my series, Biblical Hebrew 101, you might have some basic uh, or even intermediate or advanced level of proficiency with Biblical Hebrew, but you've never learned how to type in Biblical Hebrew. And so you find yourself saying sometimes, gosh, I, I wish I didn't have to copy Hebrew from this file over here or this program over here and then paste it into this file over here or this program over there. Um, I wish I could just directly type uh, Biblical Hebrew directly into whatever application I'm using at any given moment. If that's you, stick around. Uh, I'll help you get started in this episode of The Apologetics. This is Chris Date, and welcome to The Apologetics, where every other week I discuss a wide variety of theological issues and show how a properly biblical worldview can help defend the historic Christian faith from its critics. Join me as we think through what we believe and why we believe it, and not something else. So today we're going to go through the basics of typing in Biblical Hebrew, at least the basics as I see them. This is just to get you started typing in Biblical Hebrew. I'm not going to be doing a full-fledged detailed tutorial on how to type this or that word or how to get a cust how to get your fingers used to uh, typing the keys that you need to press in order to type Hebrew. You know, that kind of stuff is simply going to come through practice. Um, but the hard part in learning how to type Hebrew is often just getting started. What do I what do I even do to get started effectively typing in Hebrew? And that's what I want to help you to do in this video today. So hopefully um Hopefully this is enough to get you confident enough to take the basic steps I'm going to walk you through today, and then just throughout the week, when you have time here and there, do some practice with it, and you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly, I promise. So what I want to first talk about very briefly is why you might want to learn to type in Hebrew. If um, if you are watching this video and you aren't the kind of person that I mentioned earlier who has found him or herself wishing uh, he or she were able to cop uh, avoid copying and pasting Hebrew so they could just type it right in, um, if that's not if if that's not you, then maybe you need a little bit of um, persuasion. You know, maybe you need to be persuaded as to why this is a skill worth learning. And I hope to give you at least some reasons that might give you uh, might give you pause might, might cause you to consider um, beginning to take up this skill firstly and this is for if this is especially if you're a Hebrew learner not somebody that's already got some level of proficiency in it I think you're going to find yourself more easily able to remember your vocabulary if you type it out your own on your own flashcards rather than use pre-existing flashcards um, now a caveat here According to some studies, writing with your hand uh, your flashcards will be an even more effective way of remembering your vocabulary. And I'm not challenging that notion here. That may very well be the ideal um, for uh, for for learning your vocabulary. That's not my, I, I don't want to do that though. Um, I am a software engineer professionally and I spend a lot of every single day on a keyboard in front of a, uh, in front of a computer and frankly I try to avoid handwriting anything at all cost. Uh, maybe not all cost. Um, so, so if you're the kind of person like me who um, doesn't want to go so far as to be writing out my Hebrew flashcards but you would like like to better remember your vocabulary and its spelling than you might ordinarily do if you're purchasing a pre-existing flashcard set from the internet or something like that, uh, then I think you'll find that if you type out your own flashcards, which by the way will entail some trial and error, you'll have to um, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll find yourself making a mistake on a vowel here or there while you're typing your flashcards out. Those mistakes, that kind of trial and error, is part of the very process by which you will better learn your vocabulary and its spelling. So typing out your own flashcards is a way that uh, is going to help you, I think, to better remember your, your vocabulary and its spelling than if you, than if you use prepackaged, pre-existing ones. 
Also, uh, and this is important if you're an academic or a blogger, something like that, you'll be more easily able to add Hebrew words and verses from scripture in your academic papers, papers that you can turn in in your, you know, for class assignments or submit to journals if you would like them to publish your work, that kind of thing. And it will also make it easier for you to type uh, hat Hebrew words and verses in blog articles. If you're somebody that likes, likes to blog on biblical and theological issues, learning how to type biblical Hebrew will make it easier for you to add Hebrew into your articles than if you have to copy and paste from some other program. So these are some examples of reasons why uh, it will behoove you, it will benefit you to learn how to type in Hebrew. Another one is you'll be able to more easily uh, use Hebrew on social media. Um, so if you're like me, you find yourself periodically or maybe more than periodically getting into arguments on Facebook about this or that biblical interpretation or, the, you know, doctrine of theology and, um, and, and sometimes appealing to the biblical text in its original languages is going to be a part of an effective argument in, uh, you know, in, in a comments thread or something on social media. So if you learn how to type your Hebrew, then you'll be able to do it right there faster and more easily than if you had to switch to some other application, copy the Hebrew, paste it into social media, you know, on Facebook or whatever, that's going to be a longer and more tedious process than if you just type it in right there yourself. So that's one reason. And then lastly, and this here, I'm going to try, I'm going to appeal simultaneously a little bit to your pride and to your desire to share the gospel with people who need it. Because I think that by learning how to type biblical Hebrew, you can, uh, you might impress Jewish acquaintances, Jewish coworkers, friends, family, um, uh, colleagues, you know, a variety of different people that you might just happen to know for one reason or another, if they're Jewish, um, being able to type in Hebrew might impress them. And, and so that was the part that's appealing to your pride, but it also may give you an opportunity to have conversations about the gospel with them. If you have a, if you can make a point of connection with your Jewish acquaintances, and, and here I'm talking obviously about Jewish non-Christian acquaintances, sometimes when you make a connection, whether it's because you can type in Hebrew or for some other reason, um, it will open the door to have important gospel conversations with them. So that's another reason to consider learning to type in Biblical Hebrew. Um, there are other reasons, but I think this is a good start. Hopefully you can find one or more of these reasons, uh, encouragement to you to pick up this skill. Now I want to talk briefly about the importance of actually typing in Hebrew rather than pretending that you're typing in Hebrew, which is why I've got up on the screen making it, not faking it. Um, let me explain what I mean by that because it's probably not going to be immediately clear um, if you're not a tech guy like I am, somebody who's you know works in software and stuff like that. Um, the issue here is that some seemingly typed Hebrew isn't really typed Hebrew and is in fact merely a, merely a font applied to English that gives it the appearance of Hebrew. So you remember, for example, the font Wingdings or something like that, you know, back from the Windows 3.1 days, well, where your English characters, when you apply this particular font to it, it changes them into little cartoons and, and it's just a fun thing and, it, you know, it's, it's just cartoony and stuff. Well, those are actually English characters in code. You know, your, your, your operating system sees them as English characters. It's just applying a font to make it appear a certain way to the viewer of the screen or document or whatever. Um, so for example, this is the way that Bible works worked before it um, went under. I'm pretty sure Bible works has gone under and now uh, the better programs, Accordance and Logos and things like that are, are still being used and are gaining in popularity. But, but Bible works did exactly this kind of thing. So here, for example, if you used Bible works, you might be familiar with charts like these that map for you um, the character you want to press on your keyboard um, that will be displayed as a particular font. Um, so you can see that a capital A, if you type the capital letter A and you apply the Bible Works Hebrew font to it, it will, instead of showing the letter A, it will show the, the Holom Vav. Right? And similarly, a lowercase a, when you type it in and you apply the biblical Hebrew or the Bible Works Hebrew font to it, it will make that A appear as an Aleph. 
All right. Um, now, this might seem like you're typing in Hebrew, but it's not. And you'll know this because any system lacking the font that you use is going to fall back to a standard English font like Times New Roman or Calibri or, you know, any of the other uh, trebuchet, any, any of the common, you know, very popular system uh, default English fonts. A system that doesn't have uh, the Hebrew font you've used is just going to fall back on one of those English fonts. And then you're going to see... Uh, um, the English characters that are that were masked by the Hebrew font instead of the Hebrew characters you intended to display. So, for example, um, if you had tried to produce the word by it by typing the English characters that are masked by Hebrew when you apply the Bible Works font, in, if you if you try to do that and then you copy the file to some other system or you send it in, in email or something, and the system that is trying to render that text doesn't have that Hebrew font on it, they're going to see gibberish like tly colon b the the t there stands for the tough the um the uh i there is the um the hirek the y is the yod the colon is the um patach and the capital b is the bait with a doggish in it all right so so you can see hopefully how um uh, how the English characters are masked by applying the font to make it appear as if you're typing in Hebrew when you're really not. And then, like I said, you're going to see gibberish when you paste into other documents or load it up on other systems, etc. So better than that is to simply install a Hebrew keyboard on your system and type with it so that typed characters will render correctly on any system. Now, I could go into a little bit more detail here, um, given my software background, but I don't know how interesting that is to you, and many of you, it'll just, it's something you won't have any concern about. So I'm not going to do that, but just suffice it to say that um, if you install a Hebrew keyboard on your system and you type with it, then virtually any other system, any other application is going to be able to render that just fine using virtually any ordinary font. So Times New Roman, Calibri, Trebuchet, all of these have um, not just the English characters in their font set and, you know, in, in the defined characters in that font, but also a whole host of other characters, including Hebrew characters. Um, and if the word for this extended character set that virtually any system is going to be able to display is called Unicode. And, um, uh, and, and when you type using Hebrew keyboard, you're typing in Unicode rather than in the, um, the much more limited character set of English characters. Now, I put an asterisk next to the word keyboard there and install a Hebrew keyboard because what I want to emphasize here for you is that I'm not talking about like a physical keyboard, like like this uh, this remote um, Bluetooth keyboard that I that I tend to use. I'm not talking about a physical keyboard that you put your fingers on. Rather, I'm talking about something more like a virtual keyboard. Um, it's something you install on your operating system, and what it does is it maps the keys on your keyboard to the Hebrew characters and markings that you're going to want to use when you type in Biblical Hebrew. So in the remainder of our time today, what I'm going to do is show you how to install one of these um, virtual keyboards on your operating system, whether you're working in Mac OS or Windows, specifically Windows 10. Um, if, it, if, if you've got an earlier version of Windows, you can easily find out how to do this online. Um, and you can shoot me an email if you want, and, and I'm happy to um, uh, to help you with that. Uh, but that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And then we'll talk about some strengths of certain kinds of virtual Hebrew keyboards, uh, benefits of them over less, uh, yeah, less intuitive uh, biblical Hebrew keyboards. And, and you'll see what I mean when we get into it. So with that being said, let me begin by um, by giving you a little bit of a tutorial on how to set up your Mac to um, to type in biblical Hebrew, I am I've pre-recorded this video without sound, so I'll be speaking over it as you watch and as I watch with you. Um, so if I'm stumbling over it a little bit, if I if I'm getting ahead of it and I have to back off for a moment to let it catch up, that's why. Forgive me, um, but I'm, I do these recordings like the one that you're watching right now on my Windows machine, and so I couldn't uh, and and I don't have all of my sound equipment hooked up to my Mac and stuff like that. So that's why I'm, I'm, I've done it this way. 
So let me go ahead and um, start this video. Now, what you're seeing here is what's called text edit on a um, on a Mac, specifically a MacBook Pro. And so I can type in here, you know, A, B, C, D, E or whatever, and I've turned the font up so that you can see it really easily. Now, if you want to install a Hebrew keyboard, you want to go to your system preferences and then go to keyboard. And when that opens, click on input sources on the top ribbon there. And notice it's got a US keyboard by default if you're an English speaker. You're going to want to click that plus button and then scroll until you find Hebrew. And you're going to have a few options, and I'll show you sort of the default Hebrew keyboard first. This is the Hebrew keyboard, that, that top one in the list, that you would use if you're a native Hebrew speaker, if, if you are in Israel and, and you've got a computer that you bought there in Israel and you're typing there. You would probably use that keyboard, and I'll show you what that's like in a moment. And I'll show you what I'm about to do in the system preferences in a moment. But notice that since I added the Hebrew keyboard, the American flag shows up at the top of the screen, and I can click on it and change to Hebrew, and that's how you'll switch between your input languages. To see this in action, go to your system preferences again and go to accessibility, and then go down to keyboard, go to the accessibility keyboard on the top right, and then check enable accessibility keyboard. The benefit of this, um, I, and I'm just doing this for you right now, the, the benefit of this is that you can see the map of the keys on your keyboard to the corresponding Hebrew characters. There's the English keyboard, and then you switch it to Hebrew, here's the Hebrew keyboard, and notice that there's no, um, there's no intuitive correlation between where the characters on the keyboard are and the English character that's ordinarily on it. So here I'm typing out the word buy it and the bait is like on the C key and the Yod is on the H key and the Tav is on the N key or something like that. So they don't really, there's no intu intuitive mapping there. And it's even more difficult to access the Nikud the, or the Nikudot, the, the vowel markings and things. You can see here I'm I'm going through trying to, um, to find where the vowels are and ultimately you're going to have to click the option key or press the options key and then click on a number in order to have the vowel markings um, appear. And you can imagine how difficult this is, a pro this is going to be if you're a native English speaker because you're, it's going to be incredibly difficult to memorize which keys correspond to which Hebrew consonants and which key combinations correspond to the Nikud, the, the Nikudot, the, the vowel markings. So this isn't ideal, and for this reason, I want to encourage you to use a different Hebrew keyboard if you are on a Mac. And the one I'm, I want to encourage you to, to use, uh, I'll, I'll show you by removing the Hebrew keyboard I've already installed, and now I will install a Hebrew QWERTY keyboard. QWERTY is a, are the first six characters on your, on your normal standard English keyboard. Q-W-E-R-T-Y. And now the Hebrew characters are, are they, they have attempted to map the Hebrew characters to the sounds that the English characters make. So the bait is on the B, the Yod is on the I, and the Tav is on the T, and so forth. So now it becomes a lot easier to type out the word by it at least the consonants. And the vowels are a little bit easier than with the numbers, but you've still got to press the option key and then remember where certain vowels are, like the, uh, the patach is going to map to the A and the hirek is going to map to the I, again, when you press the options key and, uh, and type the I and so forth. So it's, it's better than the, um, than the normal standard Hebrew uh, keyboard. It's better than that keyboard for um, for native English speakers. Of course, if you're an Israeli or something like that, uh, you might want to just, <laughs> you, you may have already been very familiar with the Israeli keyboard, but then you wouldn't be watching this video, would you be? So, um, and, and then notice that it's really easy to just switch back and forth between your keyboards to type out a sentence that has combined English and Hebrew. So you could say the word for house is buy it uh, fairly easily um, without ever having to switch to some other sort of application um, and you know switch back and forth so hopefully that gives you um a bit of confidence if you're somebody that uses a mac um for you know on your in your day-to-day -day life uh, first of all i'm sorry <laughs> uh, pc is way better but secondly um hopefully uh, this is something that uh, that you can see is fairly easy to do. It's super easy to install that Hebrew QWERTY uh, keyboard, and then it's super easy uh, to switch back and forth between the US and Hebrew keyboards as you're typing. Um, and 
there will be some learning curve because not all the consonants make perfect sense. Uh, they, they tried to map them to the English characters that make the same sounds, but it's not always perfect. For example, that Yod uh, in Bayat, I had to press the I key. And you might think, well, I probably would want to press the Y key. Hold on, you'll, you'll see that in a moment on the PC. Um, but still, it's way easier than just the standard Hebrew layout for a native English speaker. And then once you have done that stuff, once you've installed that QWERTY, Hebrew QWERTY keyboard, it's just a matter of practice. It's just a matter of, of getting that muscle memory in your fingers, uh, the same muscle memory that you build up when you learn to type, uh, touch type in, uh, uh, in English. Um, it just takes time. So practice. You could... Um, you know, simply have a Bible open in, on one screen if you've got multiple monitors and then notepad in the other or, or a Word doc and just type what you're looking at. Um, and at first it'll be slow and you'll make a lot of mistakes, but over time it'll become more habitual and you'll be more successful at it. So that's how to get started typing in Hebrew on Mac. But now let's talk about the superior operating system, Windows, in this case, Windows 10. How will you type in Hebrew if you're on a Windows machine? Um, now let's go through the same kind of thing. And again, I've pre-recorded this, uh, and so if I stumble a little bit here and there, that's why. Um, but here I'm, I've done something similar to what I did before. I've got Notepad open, sort of the default text editor on a Windows machine, and I've got the font size turned up so that you can see what's going on. Um, what you're going to do in order to install a Hebrew keyboard is open up, you know, press the Windows key or something, and then type the word language. And, it will, and the very first search result that will show up is edit language, uh, edit language settings and things like that. And you'll see a screen like this that shows whatever languages you've added to your preferred languages. Click that add preferred language and type in Hebrew and click on the result that shows up and then go ahead and click next. And now you'll have some additional options that you can check, but you don't need to worry about any of these. You don't want to change your system language, for example, and stuff like that. You just want to add this as a supported language on your Windows operating system. Now, once you've done that, you are going to have an option similar to what we saw on the Mac between competing Hebrew keyboards. The, by default, a standard Hebrew keyboard will be installed, but we already saw some of the downfalls of that approach. So instead, I'm going to install the Logos Bible Software's um, Biblical Hebrew uh, keyboard, and I'll explain why in, uh, as we continue in this video. Now, once I've installed that, down in the bottom right corner of where your system tray is, you'll have an, a language option. And if you click that, you can um, switch between input languages. Um, so here I'm going to select Hebrew, for example. And just like I did on the Mac, I'm going to open up an accessibility keyboard. And the way I'm going to do that is by searching for on-screen keyboard. When you open that, it will you can move it um, out of the way and it will stay on top as you type in the notepad document beneath it. Notice how when I switch between languages, the characters appear on the keyboard just like they did on the Mac. And notice that here we also have the characters um, mapped to the keys in an intuitive way for English speakers, but it's even better, I think, than on the on the Mac because you have the bait associated with the B key, and you have, but you also, but you have the Yod associated with the Y key, which is kind of what you would expect. Moreover, a lot of the vowels you're going to use are right there on this default, um, unshifted, uncontrol, you know, no extra keys pressed layout. So you can type uh, patach just by pressing the A key. So I'm gonna, I paused the video there so I could talk for a minute, but here I'm, I pressed B, Y, T, and I got by it except without the vowels. Well, let me go back up, or back up a bit, and I'll press the A key to get a patach, and then the Y for Yod, and then the I for Hirek, right? Because it sounds like the I, it's transliterated as an I even, and then the Tav, you know, with a T, and you get by it. And I didn't have to shift at all. So it's even better than the Mac um, QWERTY keyboard. Now, it's very easy to switch languages by simply clicking on that um, language option and selecting one of the keyboards, but you can also just press and hold the Windows key and press space, and it will automatically cycle one by one through your, uh, through your supported languages. So this means that you could, have it set as, on, you could have it set to English at first and type the word for house is now 
I'll just press the Windows key and the space bar to get to Hebrew, type out buy it, press the Windows key and the space bar again um, to, uh, to get back to English, finish your sentence, and voila, there you go. Super easy. So then the question becomes, well, how do you get, so as probably as clear, maybe not, but as probably as clear, Windows operating systems don't come with Logos Bible software installed on them um, uh, or anything Bible, Logos Bible software related. So naturally your question should be, well, how do I get this Logos Biblical Hebrew keyboard installed on my computer? So let me um, tell you about that. And just to be clear, you do not have to have a Logos Bible software subscription you don't have to have the software installed on your on your um, on your uh, on your system or anything like that. All you got to do is um, go to Google and search for Logos Biblical Keyboard or you know um, something along those lines. And one of the top results is going to be original language keyboards for Windows. So they don't have a Mac version of this, which is unfortunate, at least for those of you who are unfortunate enough to work on Macs. Um, but these keyboards, and they're, it's not just Biblical Hebrew, they also have Greek and they have a transliteration keyboard. Um, they, they, they walk you through how to install any one of these keyboards on your system. It's really straightforward. Word, and it's free. You don't have to pay to install this software on your machine. So now once you've installed it, one of the things you'll have access to is a PDF user guide that shows you how to use the Logos Biblical Hebrew keyboard. And you can learn all about the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the thought that goes, that, that the Logos Bible software team has put into deciding where to map what characters to what keys, etc. Um, but what's really helpful in this document down at the bottom is that they show you, uh, they have a map that you can refer to, and I'm still referring to it periodically, that will show you which keys on your keyboard correspond to uh, which um, uh, which con which characters. And notice that there are it walks you through what the map is depending on whether you're pressing a, um, a the Alt key or a Shift key or the combination of them both. Or whatever so it's really helpful because then you have access not just to the uh the hebrew characters that are mapped to familiar english keys but also to the final forms of those characters the ones that have final forms as well as other diacritical marks like you can see on the screen right now so i highly recommend if you want to learn how if you want to do typing in biblical hebrew on a windows machine on a pc then i highly encourage you to go with the logos biblical hebrew keyboard again it's free, you don't have to have a subscription, you don't have to have the Logos software installed on your machine, any, anything like that. You just simply uh, go to their website, add the, add the free item to your cart, um, you know, submit it, you'll be given a link to where you can download and install the keyboard and then just refer to that PDF user guide in order to um, familiarize yourself with which characters are mapped to which keys. But again, the benefit of this keyboard is that you'll be able to do a lot of basic typing without even referring to that user guide. Because again, so many of the consonants and vowels are just mapped to their core, to the English letters that you would think, well, the ones that you use in transliteration. So again, the B for Bayat, and the A for Patach, and the Y for Yod, and the I for Hirek, and the, ta, the T for Tav. It just makes sense. It's intuitive to native English speakers who are learning Biblical Hebrew. So, um, so that's how to get started. Now, again, just to reiterate, I'm not going into a full-fledged tutorial beyond what I've walked you through so far, because there was really at that point nothing to walk you through, except um, you need to practice typing Hebrew and familiarize yourself uh, and, and build that muscle memory in your fingers and all those kinds of things. It just takes practice, practice, practice. But as you can see, getting started, getting to the point where you can even start practicing, whether you're on Mac, or on the superior Windows operating system. Um, either way, this uh, it, it's super easy to get started, and then it's just all uphill from there. So I hope this has um, motivated you to get started using Biblical Hebrew, uh, typing in Hebrew. I hope that it encourages you to actually type in Hebrew and not just use a masking font like BibleWorks did. And hopefully um, now you know what you need to do to get started typing in Biblical Hebrew. Um, regardless of which operating system you use. I suppose maybe you're a Unix or Linux guy, in which case, I'm sorry, I don't have anything for you. Um, so hopefully that helps. 
next time, next episode in this Biblical Hebrew 101 series will be the lecture four, in which I'll introduce you to the definite article the, and the um, Hebrew conjunction v, meaning and. Until then, todah rabah, thanks a lot. I've been your host, Chris Date, and thanks so much for watching The Apologetics, where we think together through what we believe, why we believe it, and not something else. If you've enjoyed this episode, please click the thumbs up, like icon, the subscribe button, and the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are streamed or uploaded. Either way, come back in two weeks for the next episode of The Apologetics, streaming live on YouTube every other Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Until then, 